You know that feeling when you find something that just clicks? That's exactly what I want to chat about you today. If you're gearing up for those big races or maybe just looking to get back into a solid running groove, I've got the perfect thing for you. So here's the scoop on something I'm super excited about. It's the six week back to basics for runners program. We're kicking things off on May 20th and it's going to run all the way through the end of June, just in time to give you that strong base for marathon season, goofy, dopey, or any other big endurance event you've got your eye on. Why back to basics? Well, because to reach new heights, you gotta build that base with a strong foundation. And we're doing just that, but in style, of course, because whether you're starting out or you're a seasoned marathoner, there's something here to spice up your stride. Now, let me tell you, this isn't just any run of the mill training program. We're throwing it back with a big dose of 80s and 90s vibes. And it's not just about the music. We're talking on full on nostalgia with fun, interactive challenges that'll make you miss your old cassette tapes and neon leggings. Hey friend, I'm Coach Christine at your service. As a level two RRCA coach, women's menopause specialist and ACE health coach, I'm here to guide you through every step, jog and sprint. We're all about being extra while covering the essentials because why not have the best of both worlds? Here's the best part. It's only $59 for the whole six weeks. That gives you all the audio workouts, access to our rad training app that includes strength and mobility and entry into our virtual community meetups. They aren't your typical snooze fest meetings. Think of them as a regular hangout where you can connect with your fellow runners, share your highs and lows, and really feel supported every step of the way. And don't forget about the fab prizes that we add into the mix. They're totally radtastical. We're all about making training fun and effective. You'll be part of a community that's as excited about getting fit as they are about reliving some of the best decades ever. So if you're ready to add some extra fun to your run, use the link in episode notes and sign up. Let's make this summer your strongest season yet. And if you have questions, use that send a message link in episode notes and shoot me over a text. Now let's hit play on today's very special episode. Keep striding towards greatness. And remember in the Extraordinary League, we're all about going the extra mile, with some sparkle and smile. Time for brunch. Empower. Inspire. Connect. Ignite your journey. Hey friend, welcome to a very special Mother's Day celebration here on Time for Brunch. I'm your host, Coach Christine, and today we're diving into the heartwarming stories of three incredible mother-kiddo duos who show us that running isn't just about crossing finish lines, but also about strengthening the bonds of love and family. Before we dive into these incredible tales, I want to take a moment to share what this episode means to me. As someone who is constantly amazed by the superhuman abilities of mothers who not only run the world, but also manage households with grace and love, I'm deeply touched by the dedication these women show in prioritizing fitness and health while setting a powerful example for their children. This episode is not only a tribute to my own mother, who stirred my passions for lacing up our sneakers for our official mother-daughter walks and talks, but also it's dedicated to the countless remarkable women out there who are kicking asphalt and building a stronger generation with each single step they take. I also want to acknowledge that Mother's Day can be a really tough time for some. So whether you're missing your mom, grieving a loss, or struggling with the challenges of motherhood, know you're not alone. This episode is for you too. And we're here to bring some warmth and joy to your day. Now friends, let's lace up our shoes. Let's get ready for some heartwarming stories that are sure to inspire because without further ado, I have the immense pleasure of introducing a duo that embodies a spirit of joy and perseverance and running. I want you to meet Caitlin, who's a one-on-one -on -one athlete of mine, who is an incredible inspiration, not just to those around her, but especially to her two children and her family. Caitlin's journey began in the quiet days of March, 2020, when the world paused and she found her stride through running. So from zero miles to Shiro smiles, she went from never considering herself an athlete to completing a full marathon, 17 half marathons, countless fun 5Ks, spreading her love of running across nine states and even internationally. And one of the phrases you guys have maybe heard me say a couple of times is consistency crown. And it stemmed from this woman that you guys are going to meet here and now because Caitlin proudly wears the consistency crown. She exemplifies dedication and fun in every step. 
However, recently by her side with equal enthusiasm, a whole lot of joy and a whole lot of sparkles, she brought her daughter, Emily, along, a young runner whose passion and joy for the sport lights up every single race and officially the track as well. So today they're here to share their story of their journey, the last along the way, and how running has woven a beautiful tapestry in their relationship. So let's get those laces tightened up and let's run down memory lane with Caitlin and Emily. Hello. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Can you say hello? I'm so excited. Emily, you are one of my favorite gals. And the only thing that I'm sad about is that I don't get to coach you, but you have your mom, Caitlin, as your coach. Before we get into that conversation, let's talk a little bit about food and brunch and some fun 5Ks. So a little bit of an icebreaker. If you guys could go and run any fun 5K anywhere and then celebrate with a yummy brunch, where would you run the 5K and what would you have for that special celebration brunch? Caitlin, I'm going to let you start maybe with... You know what? Let's let Emily. Emily, where are we doing our fun 5K? We're going to Disney World and dressing up as Rapunzel. Oh, are you both going to dress up as Rapunzel? Huh? Okay. I guess I am. Did you know that yet, Caitlin? I didn't know that. Okay. We have long wigs too. I think that'll be perfect. And then Caitlin, where would you like to go for brunch after this fun 5K? What kind of brunch are we getting? There's so many great restaurants in Disney World. What's that restaurant? Kona or something? Kona Cafe with the Tonga Toast. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Oh, Emily has a a special meal she would like for her brunch, right? Yeah. What do you want? I want to eat sprinkles, whipped cream, strawberries, all on pancakes, and a touch of edible glitter. And you guys have to know this is why she's a gal after my own heart. Edible glitter? How could you go wrong with that? Seriously? That's what I said, right? I said Coach Christine will love that. Yes, we'll have to make this fun 5K happen at some point. I know that you guys have run Disney, but let's get a little bit more of how you guys got started on running, how you are such incredible athletes in the here and now. And Caitlin, I do want to start with you. What sparked your running journey during COVID? And tell us a little bit about how you got laced up and you got started on it. Yeah, so (laughs) I started during COVID, like never ran before. So I hated running. I was, <laughs> I was the girl in gym class that avoided running the mile. So during COVID though, I mean, everything was shut down. So I was going to the gym before that. I did exercise, but never ran. So during COVID, a friend had asked me to do a virtual 5K for a charity. And I thought, sure, why not? I'll do it. And somehow I liked it. <laughs> and that's where it all started. I don't know. But I think part of it was the continued challenge and how every run from there was the PR, right? Like I kept improving, obviously. Everything was a PR at that point. And I had a friend that encouraged me to run my first half marathon that same year, I think. Yes. And then I ran my first marathon the following year. So it just all built on itself. And it was new challenge after new challenge, especially during COVID. It was all those pretty virtual medals that I was doing, right? And of course, the other big thing was I wasn't encouraging my family to run with me. I was literally running away from my family at that time. Sorry, Emily. (laughs) But you didn't you didn't run fast enough from Emily because she caught up to you. She caught the running bug herself. She did. So, Emily, how did you get started on running? Well, I don't actually know. We were talking about that. What did I do? I think I just was running so much that one day I was like, hey, why don't you try this with me, right? Wasn't your first race the Disney 5K, the Princess 5K? Yeah, my first ever race was a 5K. At Disney, that would do it. That would definitely make most people want to be runners. Now, I am really curious about, Caitlin, you hit on something that I think is so powerful for most new runners is that it is very exciting at first because you do get to hit all of those like this is the furthest distance I've ever run or this is the longest I've ever run or this is the fastest I've ever run what happens when that no longer is shiny and new how did you continue to get excited about it yeah that's a really good point I won't I'll be honest there was definitely a point there where when I plateaued and I wasn't you know I remember that first half marathon that I didn't PR and of course I was disappointed I had a friend actually tell me, like, you're not going to PR every race. Are you crazy? (laughs) And I think what I've done a little bit after that, I started doing my 20 minutes of movement every single day, my intentional movement every single day. And it became a habit. 
and I came up with new goals and new challenges. It didn't have to be speed. It didn't have to be length of running because I haven't run as long as, you know, I was marathon training in 2021. I haven't run that long since then. Half marathons, but not the full. So there's new challenges. There's new types of workouts, right? The different fartleks and ladders and all that stuff, running on the treadmill again and actually liking it. Like there's new types of challenges. And like I said, I, I made the movement a habit instead of forcing it. I've learned to really enjoy it. So that's what keeps me going. (laughs) I love your intentional movement because I think that it gives you a lot of grace. And yet it's also one of the things that one of the biggest pros of run streaks is that it helps to kind of take out that argument that our brain sometimes has. But am I going to run or not going to run? That that's what the appeal of run streaking is. And essentially you did that in a very healthy, balanced way where it's intentional movement. Sometimes it may be just really restorative yoga. And other times it is uh, getting in your run. But that, of course, brings me back to Emily. So I know you're really active in a lot of different things as well. And you did the Disney 5K. But what do you love most about running now? I feel like it's more fun. It's fun now? Yeah. (laughs) Good. Why do you feel like it's fun now? Do you think it's because you do actively pursue running? Because you're doing it a few times, a couple, a few times a week now, right? Uh Running track. It's fun. It's a great fun. (laughs) You have your friends with you at track, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to take your words out of your mouth. (laughs) So I love the fact that you enjoy running now. Both of you do. I'm sure we have, we all have days, right? Where we don't enjoy it as much as others. Yeah. One of the things that I find pretty fascinating though, is like when we first come to running and then our first time actually calling ourselves a runner. I'm like, do you remember when you first felt like you could call yourself a runner? Yeah. Oh, I remember. Um, <laughs> I remember when you first called yourself a runner. Do you remember that story? No. When you met Catherine Switcher. Who's that? <laughs> We have to remind her the story. So Emily, my understanding is that you got to go to DC and you were going to be running a race with your mom that weekend. And it got rained out. Now there was some really bad weather. Yeah, there was some really bad weather, but you got to go to the expo. Yeah, the rain is terrible right now. Yes, it was windy and rainy. So your race was canceled. But you met a legend. You met the woman who first ran Boston Marathon with an official bib. And she asked you if you were going to take after your mom and become a runner when you were older. And you responded with... Do you remember what you responded with now? I am. I am a runner. (laughs) Yes. So let's all take a quick moment. If we're rolling through here in this conversation and you've been doubting yourself a little bit, maybe you're thinking, I don't know, I can call myself a runner yet. We're going to all let Emily inspire us. And we're going to say, I am a runner. So I love the confidence you had and the fact that you called it out. You're like, I run. And that's all it takes. And I enjoy it. So we all can learn so much from that specific story. I love it. Yes. You were already a runner, right? So you may have already touched on it a little bit, but can you maybe tell me one of your most memorable 5Ks that you guys have tackled together? Because you have a lot of fun ones. I'm jealous of a lot of them. Do you want to answer? Or do you want me to answer? Um, I don't know. You don't know. I'll tell you what was really memorable for me. During the very, so the first 5K was our Princess 5K. So that must have been 2023, right? Last year. I mean, it was so much fun to get dressed up, right? I got you up super early in the morning. We got dressed up. What? Two? Like 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Got dressed up as what? Ariel. Ariel. (laughs) But my favorite part of that race, though, she was getting a little discouraged. I mean, it was her first race, of course. So she was like... When we first started, I was like... How many miles is this? <laughs> it's a lot of miles, isn't it? That was really funny. We started the race and she said, how long is a 5K? I'm like, really? <laughs> you don't know that by now? So I think it's after all that training. At one point, you know, she was getting a little discouraged, but, and I think we were walking a little bit. But then of course we get towards the finish line and I said, you have to run to the finish line. I mean, come on, that's the best part. You have to like run through the finish line. It's going to be people cheering, like, it's exciting. You get your medal. That's the best part. So I told her, come on, let's run. And she's like, no, no, no. I'm going to wait till we get closer. And then we turned that corner. She saw all the people. I'm going to get emotional. Like she saw all the people on either side as we were getting to the finish line. 
and her face, like, I'll just never forget it. I wish I had a picture of it. She looked so proud of herself and like so excited and she's looking around and I got emotional while we were running. Like, I love that. And we finished the race and you could tell she was proud of herself, but then she was tired and then she started complaining again. <laughs> so how did you feel about it when you crossed that finish line or maybe when you turned the corner? Cause I think that if I remember correctly, the course, it's kind of a little quiet right before you get to that corner that you turn. And then there's like a throngs of people and they're cheering you on. So how'd you feel when you saw that? Yeah. Famous. <laughs> Famous. Yes. Absolutely agree. <laughs> exactly. It felt like I was a celebrity on the red carpet, but just running. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it feels like. <laughs> Everyone's looking at you, right? And especially if you have your name on your bib. They're and like, es- Emily. And Emily. especially if, like, I'm a little kid. Yes. A 5K. Like, that is surprising for other people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is. And not that you're just doing a 5K, that you are running strong and finishing strong. Yes, exactly. With a smile on your face. (laughs) (laughs) You guys can't see this now, but huge smile on the face. So I am curious, do you have another race that kind of sticks out to you or maybe one of your track practices? What other memories do you have about running that kind of mean a lot to you? Well, um, when I once I did a race called... 222k and I think it was my first one at the very end my face looked like ghost face (laughs) you mean you were like you looked really tired right yes you have a picture of that (laughs) because you ran so strong and hard or yeah well that's okay we all have pictures like that at the finish line I promise you I think it was hot too I was like oh yes she made that you you can't see it it looks like ghost Um, face though yeah she kind of like had her hands on her cheeks like oh my gosh what am I doing (laughs) (laughs) the famous painting comes to mind I think it's called oh yes like the scream face yeah yeah that's what I mean (laughs) I could share that picture if you need (laughs) oh my goodness Well, that is exciting. Now, one of the things that, Caitlin, you touched on, and I want you guys both to kind of answer this, but I'm going to start with you, is that we do get to a point, as you mentioned, we plateau. We're not going to have PRs every single time that we go out for a run, but you have kind of made it your goal to create new challenges, to create new PRs that bring you accomplishment and joy and happiness. What are some ways that you would advise others to kind of look at creating different challenges or PRs or ways to approach their running that does create that sense of joy that you have? Yeah, it can be very hard because the easiest goal that always comes to mind, we've talked about this, the easiest goal that always comes to mind is improve that pace, right? You always want to improve your last pace or run further, but, and not that that's not great. I think that I just got to a point where that wasn't the goal I wanted anymore. I wanted to try something different. So I did a couple different things like traveling to more places that could be fun or just making sure you're having fun with every race. Right. Because I always tell myself, like, why, why would I be doing this if I'm not enjoying it? So if I'm not always hitting those times, I don't want it to discourage me and make it that I don't want to be running anymore. Like sometimes that thought crosses my mind. Like, why am I running? Like I said, I never ran before in gym class. (laughs) but I don't want that. I want to continue running. I love the way it makes me feel most of the time during the run, but especially after. (laughs) And I want to continue that. And I want to continue that for Emily too. I want her to enjoy it. And I want my team that I'm coaching to enjoy running. So I feel like that has to be the number one goal first. And I've heard it from you many times. Like (laughs) the goal is to have fun. Like I said, if you're not doing that, it's like, what's the point? (laughs) So I try those other goals, like I said, you know, traveling or anything else. Yeah. And you've come up with some incredible ones. I mean, truly, I'm still floored by the amount of races you've done, the fact that you've internationally run and as well with you, Emily. So I'm curious, how do you create a little bit of extra fun and joy in your running and your training? Because track is not easy. Yeah, it's not really that easy. I don't really like the long distance. (laughs) <laughs> that is a-okay. There's a lot of times where I don't like the long distance either. <laughs> you were going to like the long distance since you've done a couple 5Ks. But I don't like it. Now you like the short distance. Yeah. The racing is fun. You go really fast, right? And the shorter distances. What do you like about the shorter distances? Do you like the fact that you're going really fast? Yeah. And I like that my mom is oh. 
sneaking、uh-huh. in the short distances. Oh, okay. So the secret comes out. You want to be with me? <laughs> yeah, I'll be with you. Okay. I mean, how perfect. What if I coach the long distance? Then would you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> the truth, actually, <laughs> she likes you and the short distances. Let's not mess up that recipe. It's a perfect recipe for success. It creates joy. You put a smile on your face afterward, or maybe even during track. So that's all that matters, right?、Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I'm curious again for both of you, Caitlin. One of the things that I'm impressed with your consistency crown that you literally have jewels with every day because you are juggling so much. You juggle coaching now the track and the track practices, which is a couple times a week. You've got a full time job. You really, the word that always comes to mind when I think of you is that you really balance a lot of different things. And I'm sure that outside looking in, it probably looks easy. I'm sure it's not that easy on the inside. But how do you do it? Or what would be some words of encouragement you would have for others that maybe feel like they are juggling too much? I really think it comes back to like what I said before about making it a habit. And it's the way I word it too, because I caught myself the other day. Actually, I had a very busy day, and I said, "Oh, I have to do my yoga tonight." It was only yoga, but it's still intentional movement, you know. And I said, "Oh, I have to do it." And then I said, to, "And I really thought to myself, but I want to do it though." Once I changed the way I worded it, it really made me want to do it even more. Right? I made it a habit, so I feel like I don't want to say I have to fit it in, but it's just so natural now that I. You know, I do something every day. But the other piece that really helps me and is so important to me, and you taught me this too, I think, Coach, <laughs> is to literally schedule my workouts like it's a work meeting. So I will block off time on my work calendar to make sure that I fit it in. And some days, it's literally I get off a call, I go for my run, I come right back, sit down for another call, and I'm doing my stretch or not even sit down, do my stretches while I'm <laughs> on that next call, and. I just know how much better it makes me feel to make sure that I fit it in and to get that break too from work or from family life and get that alone time, right? Because when I'm on the run too, like I focus on the run, and I don't mean that I'm always focusing on my run only. Like I listen to music or an audio book or whatever, but like I don't think about work and all of that. But when I'm home and I'm with my family, I'm focused on my family, and if I'm in front of my computer, <laughs> I'm focused on work. So. I try to separate all of those things. So many powerful statements that I'm going to call them out right here. So you've done a lot of mindset training, and with that, you're very intentional with your wording, which kind of plays right into helping us to reprogram our mindset, time management in terms of scheduling it, planning for it, and also I'm hearing quite a bit of being intentional with everything that you do, so that you're allowing yourself to be in that moment. But I'm also hearing that you allow yourself to not let it be. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a full sixty-five minutes. If if you can't get to it, you can't get to it. But you know that you're going to make it happen some way. So Emily, when you hear that your mom's doing all of these things, how do you feel that you tackle all of the things that you do? Because you're a busy bee as well. So do you feel excited to tackle these things as well, or are there days that you kind of feel like it's a little bit tougher to get motivated? Well, I. I- You said you wanted to talk about all the other things you were interested in besides running, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about those. What are they? I like to play cards, <laughs> like with my mini cards I got from Easter. <laughs> you do like to play cards and other games, right? Yeah, I like to. My favorite one is, I think. Favorite game. Yeah, my favorite game is Five Second Rule. Oh yeah, that's really fun. I don't know what it is. What is it? Can you tell me what it is? We like to play Five Second Rule as a family. I think there's a Disney version. Was there a Disney version? We have the Disney version. Yeah. So you want to explain the game? Go ahead. You can do.、It. You want me to explain the game? <laughs> okay. So each card in the game says name three. Whatever. So it might name, say name three Disney movies, and you only have five seconds to answer. And if you name three in those five seconds, then you get the card, and whoever gets the most amount of cards wins. So there's a lot of fun versions of that. So we like to play as a family, right? What other activities do you do? I run. You run and <laughs> are you serious? Yeah.、Uh, <laughs> <dance. laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so you love dancing. So you love just moving, grooving, enjoying yourself. So I am going to play a little bit of five second rule with you now that I know the rules. Ooh. I don't have a card to give you, but we'll figure that out later. So what are the three favorite Disney characters that you have? I like Rapunzel, Ariel, and Moana. Moana? Yeah. See, friends, if you ever are stuck when you talk about Disney, you know absolutely that you're going to have that five second rule win. So high five. Absolutely awesome. You did great. Good job. Those are all incredible characters for sure. So what do you say to yourself, Caitlin, when you are lacking in motivation? You kind of already touched on it. You get the chance to do this. I don't have to do this. But do you also say the same things to your kiddos when they're lacking in motivation for all of the things that life can have? Like, I don't know, bedtime. Yes. Eating vegetables. I never want to go to bed or eat the vegetables. How do you know? But I eat vegetables. I like broccoli, but it has to have butter on it. I've heard that? And I have to see the butter. Oh, okay. So we can't melt it. We have to make sure you see a big pat of butter on top of it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it does make it more delicious. There is no doubt on that. And what do I do to encourage you to eat your vegetables? Is that the question? Yeah. <laughs> I eat my vegetables. Yeah, so you model by example and put some yumminess on it. But in reality, what do you say to encourage maybe the kids that you're coaching, your kids, when things can get tough and they have to dig a little deeper? Yes, I've experienced that at track already where some of the girls get tired or have aches and pains or whatever. And I guess it goes back to what I was saying before and what you always say to me too is just keep going and have fun with it. I mean, I know it's track, right? And they should be going a little faster, especially in the shorter distances. And we should encourage them to run the whole time. But I feel like it would be so much worse for them to quit. I mean, especially at this age, they're nine and 10 year old girls in the group, any technically. And, you know, I don't want them to be discouraged. So I don't want them to quit. I don't want them to not like it. I want them to keep coming. So if I'm yelling at them, I'm not going to be yelling at them to like go fast and run the whole time. You know, I want them to enjoy it. So I try to be a little lenient like that and just have them keep going. Just keep walking at least. Positive encouragement to keep moving forward. At least keep walking and have fun. Emily, what do you say to your teammates whenever they need a little bit of a pep talk? Because I feel like if anybody can add a little dose of sparkle to help people get motivated to keep going, it would be you. I help them. And I'm usually the one behind. So. Are you? Yeah. She's being humble because I saw the pictures, friends. She is not the one behind, but that's okay. She's being a little humble here. You're like me, middle of the pack. Yeah. We're not the speed demons, but we also try our best, right? Uh-huh. And we keep moving. And you encourage your teammates. I heard it. I do? Yeah. I know I do, but I don't know what to say. You don't know what you say. Well, you stand next to you. Not fan. You run with them, right? And that encourages them. Yeah, you are running with your friends. Uh, but they're my friends. Yes, they don't need help. But that's the most important part: is to be there for our friends. Sometimes they need more help than we realize. Sometimes just being there is enough. So that's a really important lesson that you're imparting for sure. Now, Caitlin, you literally are running the world, and likely Emily's going to run the world with you. I mean, quite cue Beyonce here. You girls run the world. What's next for you? What's next on your horizon as to somewhere that you want to run? I already know because I have your race calendar, but for the folks that are listening in. Like, you know already, we're going to Rome. We're going to Italy. And there is a race on New Year's Eve, which happens to be one of my favorite holidays. I just love New Year's Eve. And the 5K is in Rome, one of my favorite cities. And I'm trying to convince this one here to join me. I don't know if you decided yet. Wait, for 5K? <laughs> I heard it's one of the best 5Ks. Yeah. I've heard it's phenomenal. Yeah, 5K. I think you should do it. I think you would absolutely love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not Disney, but it's really, really amazing. That's for sure. I'll only do it if I get gelato at well, the end. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Why would you do a 5K in Rome without gelato? I mean, I, mean, that. I know. <laughs> and pizza. Yeah. yeah. But gelato first. Gelato first. Okay. I'm fine with that. So gelato, pizza, then pasta, then gelato again. Okay. That sounds perfect to me. I agree. Definitely. Especially after 5K in Rome. That sounds incredible. So you're going to keep running the world. We're going to do that. I want to call back to you. I know I've mentioned it a few times, but guys, again, I cannot stress to you enough how much Caitlin does actually seek out, maybe not 
the biggest races sometimes, but the most fun races. So I feel like you've done taco 5Ks. I know you guys have done a cupcake 5K, I feel like, together. We did an ice cream one together. I don't remember cupcake. I did a cupcake one with my friends, and I think we're going to do it again this year. Maybe you'll be invited. Let me see. <laughs> Ooh. I think it, it might hinge on that gelato 5K, because that's what we're going to officially rename the Rome one at this point. I like it. <laughs> Not maybe, I will. You will. Okay. Ooh, just like you are a runner. <laughs> More words of wisdom from Emily. Not maybe, I will. <laughs> I love it. So with that, I do want to ask you guys, what would you say to the audience about trying to run together as a family? What's something you've learned running together? Do you want to answer? That, um, Go ahead. That only. I love running with you. Yeah. I do. Because I love seeing your face at the finish line, like I said. Right? Can I look at one? <laughs> um, wait, was it? Was it? Wait. She's looking at her nose. No, this was off the cuff. Oh, that's not the question. <laughs> this was an extra question, Emily. Um, yeah, this is off the cuff. I'm thinking so much, I forgot the questions. <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's fair. I do I do that too. I forget the questions as well. So my question is, is somebody who's going to start running with maybe their own mom, what would you encourage them or what would you say about the experience of running together with your mom? I would say... It's very fun, and um, your mom will encourage you, and you will have to wake up early. <laughs> True words were never spoken. It's always more fun to run with other people, especially for races, right? With friends. And especially family and friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. You wanted to tell your story about your friend that you ran with? Is that what you wanted to tell? Yeah. You want okay, to share let's do it. it. I want to hear it. So, so for my shamrock race... One of my friends pushed me, literally. <laughs> and then other times my mom pushed me, non-literally. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you prefer? The literal or the not literal push? Literal. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, lesson learned. At the track next week, coach. You know what you got to do, Caitlin. Busher. <laughs> Are you just like the hand on your back? That's kind of encouragement like that? Or you want to literally be pushed across the finish line. I think that might be cheating. <laughs> not in my world. Not in my world. Sometimes we need that extra little push. So that's great. So you've learned a lot from running with your mom and your friends. And it sounds like to me that it's basically supportive, encouragement, and a little bit of a push, be it literal or not literal, will always help you to get over that finish line. Does that sound right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, ladies, I want to thank you so much. I am going to invite myself to your Disney 5K so I can have sparkle edible glitter pancakes afterwards. And if I can figure out a way to invite myself to your Gelato Rome 5K, I would do that as well. But I, I likely don't think that's going to happen. But with that said, I want to thank you both. And again, you both wear your consistency crowns. So hopefully you have a lot of pride in that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I could not love those two anymore. So Emily, Caitlin, uh, thank you so much for sharing your super inspiring stories with us all. And I can't wait to run with you again very soon. Speaking of running together very, very soon, I am also delighted to introduce you to a couple of, well, a mother-son duo that I had the opportunity to run with not too long ago. So let's go ahead and talk to this incredible mother-son duo, Mandy and her son, Wyatt. Mandy, who describes running as her love note to herself, can't we all relate to that, has found joy and self-care on the trails and tracks. A devoted mom of two adult young men, she has spent years cheering from the sidelines of their lives, supporting every single milestone. And recently, Mandy completed the formidable Dopey Challenge at Disney World, a testament to her dedication and passion for running. And she inspired Wyatt to join along with her in this running world. And now, as a Girls on the Run soulmate, he is tackling the Springtime Surprise Challenge alongside Mandy. And that is a 5K, a 10K, and a 10-miler. And I think that's just going to be the first of many races that they have in the books here, friends. But today, we're here to share the magic, and I don't want to keep this incredible duo from you. So let me go ahead and bring them on in and welcome them. Hello, Wyatt and Mandy. How are you two doing? Great. How are you, Christine? I'm doing fabulous. I mean, how can you not? We're going to be talking about running. And of course, that's one of our favorite topics. 
So before we get too far into it, Wyatt, I kind of did a little bit of an intro, but I'm going to ask you to introduce your mom, specifically focusing on her journey into running and kind of a little bit of your perspective of it. Absolutely. Um, So my mom's been running for as long as I can remember, starting out very short distances. And then a couple years ago, had knee surgery done. And then she uh, started to get into the longer distances and run more and more and then pushed me into it. And so here we are. I like that little bit of the push, maybe a little gentle nudge. Mandy, could you introduce the audience to Wyatt? Of course, talking a little bit about that gentle nudge and how you inspired him to get going. Sure. So Wyatt is my youngest of the two. Um, He's been an athlete his entire life, right? From t-ball to soccer to baseball to basketball to track and field. Um, Junior year in high school, went through some health stuff that we really never figured out that ended his sports career. So senior year, no sports, graduated from high school, went straight to tech school, got his associate's degree done, took care of getting his diesel technician, came back to the the so-called real world, right? And has been busy with that work-life cycle. Um, He came home one day and he said, mom, I just, I gotta do something to start getting myself a little healthier. And we started talking about running and he rejoined running with me and, and seems to be enjoying it so far. I'm really interested to talk a little bit about that because I think that's what happens to a lot of us as we officially get into the grind of our regular work lives. What kind of precipitated that thought where you're like, I don't feel like I'm at my healthiest or maybe my most active. What kind of made you decide to have this conversation with Mandy? Like being at school, I played basketball here and there at the rec center, but I was just sitting around a lot, not doing much and just found myself just becoming super unhealthy with what I eat and my act my activities. So I got home, got adjusted back to normal lifestyle and now waking up at two o'clock in the afternoon. Just decided it'd be better for me personally to get more active and get back into doing something. I love that. And again, as I know you guys are tackling Run Disney and I feel like there's gonna be many more down the road as you continue to grow in your running journeys. But I also know that you are no stranger to Run Disney as we know it. This is not going to be the first time with Springtime Surprise. It definitely wasn't your first Mandy with Dopey. So do you want to tell us a little bit about maybe your running history together? Mandy, I'm going to let you take it. Sure. So we actually, our first run together as a family was a run Disney event in 2015, the last event that was held at Disneyland before its recent exciting return. Um, The kids are big superhero fans. So when I saw the Marvel weekend come up, it's something we certainly had to dive into as a family. And that really started it back. We did it together to the 5K, um, all four of us together, their dad and his older brother. And when we came home, the bug kind of bit the family on those 5K weekends, right? What other things can we do together? So we did some non-Disney stuff. We did a blacklight run. We've done color run. We did hot chocolate runs, short runs to spend time together, right? There's no technology when you're running. Okay, your watch, some of us wear our headphones, but when you're out there together, there's conversation, it's fun, it's uninterrupted and really just good quality family time together. So the entire family runs? We did, Okay, we did. It's really down to, well, my oldest still runs. Um, He's a police officer. And so it's kind of part of his job and staying healthy. He runs a couple of miles, a couple times a week. I'm definitely not into the distance stuff. Wyatt's recently finding the bug for the distance and starting to go the distance. No Disney pun intended there, right? (laughs) (laughs) We get where there's going to be plenty of run puns. I am super curious, Wyatt. Why do you think that you are more gravitating towards those endurance style events going past the 10K into these 10 milers and halves and beyond, what's actually gravitating you towards it? The challenge part of it, I've never been afraid of a challenge and it's just helped me. My mom volunteered and helped out Texas Outlaw running with an event. And I met one of the other runners who was also 19 years old and I helped him finish the last four miles and I've been in contact with him and we're actually planning to run a 50K to 100K probably next year. That is so amazing. Oh my gosh. Seriously, I always think of ultra endurance as something that's generally reserved for older folks because there's a lot of mental resiliency that I don't know I would have personally had patience at 19. So congratulations on taking that step. That's absolutely amazing, Wyatt. Mandy, I think this speaks a lot of testament to you. When I hear someone say, I am never one to turn down a challenge. And again, 
at 19 years of age to take on such a big tackle in an ultra endurance event down the road here shortly. This speaks a lot of volumes about maybe some of the relationships that you fostered or how you fostered that inside of the household. So what for the moms that are listening in who also want to make sure they have the healthiest, happiest adult children, what are some of your tips? So I think with us, it's not just about celebrating the successes. We celebrate our failures too, because you tried, right? You yes. got out there and you tried. I think that sometimes we get stuck into a society of everybody gets that participation ribbon, right? Which is kind of funny to say when you think about running events, because don't we sign up for the bling, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I sure did. Yes, absolutely. I don't have to be in that top five to get my medal. As long as I finish, I'm going to get that. And that's pretty cool. But we've always been celebrate the failure too, because that's going to help us get to the next level. And we don't spend too much time on that failure. If you had a run, if there was a basketball game that didn't go the way they wanted it to go, whatever it was they were doing, let's spend a few moments on it, but let's not dwell on it. So we talk about what failed, we talk about how we fix it, and we move forward, right? As much as we celebrate the successes, because teaching that resiliency and teaching that, yeah, I got knocked down, but I can do this again, it's worth going again, is really important. How about in your training specifically for both of you leading up to some of these really big challenges that you have, can you think of a notable failure that kind of sticks out in terms of training run or... I don't know. There's so many different facets from and so many possible fails to celebrate from getting our nutrition and hydration down to actually completing runs at a specific pace or maybe for you some simulation runs. What are some notable sticks out of mind if you could think of some failures that you've had along the way in these preparations for dopey springtime, these kind of challenges? So in prepping for springtime, Wyatt mentions volunteering at that ultra event. He finished the last four miles with this young man and his 50K no 100K that day. And the following weekend, we had a long run planned, a nine or a 10 mile run planned. And he said, mom, let's go back and let's run that trail, right? Trail I'm not familiar with. We had not been on before. He ran the last four miles of it in the dark, right? It's like nine, 10 o'clock at night. So he really didn't get the terrain that he was on. So we decided, yeah, let's do this. So we drove 45 minutes from the house to go run this trail. We were all ready, right? Doing the nutrition on the road in, drinking lots of water. We weren't on the trail three or four miles, Christine. Wyatt's hip started hurting. He called me because we he obviously runs much faster than me, being 19 years old and 6'4". Um, keeping up with him is a little hard. So he had called me and he's like, Mom, my hip hurts. This trail is brutal. It was windy. So I told him, stop, stop. We will walk, you turn around, start coming back to me. I'm gonna keep coming towards you. We will turn and we will make the walk back however many miles that is. And when we caught up to each other, you could tell there was a look of disappointment on his face. There was a look of frustration, right? We never wanna have a bad run. So we used the remainder of that walk back to our vehicle, which was a couple of miles, but use that to really talk about, it's a bad run. It's not a bad life. It's not gonna make for a bad event. It's not going to make tomorrow's run any different, right? Let's troubleshoot while we're walking. What's causing the hip pain? What's causing that trouble? We'll do it again tomorrow. We'll try it again next week. We'll come back to this trail. So just spending that little bit of time kind of debriefing on it. And when we got in the, the vehicle to drive home, that's it. We're done with it. We've put the bad run behind us. We focus on what's coming up next in our training. It feels so productive. When you yeah. talk about it from that perspective, it, it allows you to do all of the things. You first, I'm sure there's a certain level of disappointment or frustration. And so you're able to process that, but you're also able to really look at it from a productive as like, how do we learn from this experience of it not being its best? So absolutely amazing. That's such a great example and definitely something I feel like all of us can learn from. Tell me more about you guys' training because it sounds like you're running together quite a bit. So what are some of the things that you've been tackling during your training leading up to some of the fun events that you're going to be tackling? Just getting back in shape from not running for so long and finding my stride because I'll find myself pushing too hard on, on a mile or going too slow and then I want to push harder and, and fatiguing myself too early, especially on the longer runs. And then just right way to land because that's what I found when my hips were hurting. I was, I was landing too far back in my heel. Now to start landing more forward. So just talking with my mom and learning more about running and how to how to change up and overcome some, some obstacles. 
what I hear is like a fostering a household and a culture, not just of resiliency, but also of curiosity. So instead of looking at these failures as, or these kind of obstacles as maybe a career killer, if we're going to say it as that, we look at it as like, okay, cool. So maybe what I need to do is tweak this or how could I tweak that? So I think that's also an incredible standout on that. So congratulations again. I'm so excited to hear about your training. And it feels like you probably have gotten more fitness than you even give yourself credit for since you're already thinking of the ultra marathon distance. I'm curious, Mandy, how about you? Because I would assume that your training probably looks a little different. I mean, at the end of the day, it's running, but I'm assuming it still looks a little different than maybe Wyatt's does. Yeah, I certainly have different goals, right? Um, Completion of Dopey this past January was huge. My only goal was to complete it, right? I wanted to cross that finish line, get to that challenge tent and, and pick up that coveted Dopey. But for me, now it's working on speed. Right. And my speed still looks very different than Wyatt's speed. Um, Prior to that knee surgery he referenced, I was running a 10 and a half minute mile. Now, if I can break 13 and a half or 14, that's a productive day. So, you know, a lot of mine's working more on that speed, focusing more on staying consistent. And so when we train together, what we really mean is we're running at the same time, but not together. Right. He's going to be working on something different than I am. But we always try to to schedule those runs so that our cool down is together. And then we kind of debrief on our walk back how that event went, how our training went, what our next goal is, and then use each other as a sounding board to make those tweaks that we need to get to that next distance or whatever our next goal is. That was going to be my next question. And you already kind of gave that really fantastic advice of how would you suggest for folks that want to get together with doing some parent child running or creating that duo or that dynamic, regardless of how the partnership is. And it sounds like what you basically do is, again, you block up that time and you both dedicate your plan, kind of your race, your pace, the suggestion and letting folks do what they need to do, but then still spending some quality time and that cool down together. Are you guys at all tired of talking about running when you're at home at this point? Or is that all that you guys are talking about currently? Uh, That's a really great question. And I think it comes down to the whole runner, non-runner culture, right? I think anytime we run into another runner, that's the topic, right? The world could be on fire and we're going to talk about running before we catch up on what that current event is. So being in the same household and talking about it all the time, it is a frequent conversation. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves to pull out and there's other things to talk about. When other people are around, it is difficult to pull out of that running conversation, especially when you're so close to an event, right? Right now, all we can talk about is springtime challenge. What are we packing? You know, what are the necessities? It is a pretty 365 topic around the two of us. Okay. I mean, I get it. I've been accused of being a bit myopic in my conversation at times as well. So I have to ask you though, Mandy, a little bit about, you described previously that your running is a bit of like a selfish indulgence and definitely part of your self-care routine. But I also hear that it's given back to your family in a myriad of ways. How has sharing this part of your life with Wyatt And your other son, because I think you guys have run together as well, Austin. How has it changed your description of a selfish indulgence? Or do you still feel that it kind of is? I primarily run for me, so I still feel like it is. I returned to running, oh my goodness, I'd say probably about 15 years ago, I got invited to do an obstacle course race with a cousin of mine. And that event itself was just, in a way, life-altering. It was a group of women that were supposed to run together. It was my very first obstacle course race. I am horrible about checking text messages. So I got to the event that morning, which happened to be on my birthday, got to the event. It was a cold November morning in Phoenix. It had been raining. They were rushing to fix obstacles because there was so much rain on the course. Just made the mud run part of it more fun, right? I would say so. (laughs) Yeah. Picked up my bib and my shirt and went to put it in the truck. And I checked my phone and I had a message that none of the other girls were showing up. They were all sick. Okay. So in that very moment, I was like, well, I've got my shirt. And actually, this is an event where they just gave you your medal with your shirt. I'm like, got my medal. I've got my shirt. I could just go home and there's nobody to say that I did or did not run this event. And in that moment, I was like, no, I trained for this. I'm going to do this for me. It's not about anymore being with them. I'm going to do this for me and prove to myself that I can do this. And I did it. I finished all the obstacles. I had set a goal for myself. It was a 5K obstacle course. I said, I'm going to do it. 
an hour and 15 minutes with the, the 30 some odd obstacles and I'll be happy. I finished in 55 minutes. So I was on top of the world. I'm like, that is it. This is like next event. When is the next one? And my older son got the bug. He's like, mom, that's kind of cool. This is like ninja warrior in the mud stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it applies to what he does. So I can understand that as well. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it became that you spend so much time in our daily life doing things for our children, for our spouses, for our families, for our parents, that running became the one thing that I could do for me. Absolutely. That didn't require somebody else to be a part of. It's something that I could find time to go out and do, shed the stress of family life, shed the stress of financial, of job, of whatever. So it did become something I did for me. And it, at first I did call it very selfish, right? Because when it was my time to run, I would tell the kids, I'm gone for 45 minutes. I'm gone for an hour. Don't call me. Don't text me. I will be back. But if I call you, pick up the phone because I'm probably wanting to be picked up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Don't call me. I'll call you. Okay. I like it. <laughs> so, you know, it, it did become my selfish time, but honestly was a gift to myself because you can't fill others cups if your vessel isn't full. So that became my time to recharge my vessel and to center myself so that I could be there for everybody else in the family. I think that's incredibly poetic. And I really want to remind folks of that, especially with the Mother's Day episode, because I think that that's really speaks volumes. And what I'm hearing again is that what may have, or maybe even feels selfish, and it does feel like a bit of an indulgence, it's made quite the impact on your family. So why I'm curious what are some of the ways that you tackle balancing your life as it is now? Because again, as you mentioned, you've got responsibilities with your career and you have other responsibilities as well. And now you have this love of running and you're going to be putting in quite a few miles when you start doing all the ultra training. So how do you kind of balance it all? It's difficult, especially um, with my hours at work being uh, pretty crazy some weeks. So I don't have, a, I get off uh, fairly late and I work about an hour away from where we live. So um, it's kind of hard to run of the evening, but like when it comes to weekends and it's time to train, I, it's time to go. I don't, I put my phone, I do not disturb and I get, I get my gear ready and I get my headphones on. I just go and just don't let anything bother me until I'm done. I want to call out specifically how Mandy, you said yourself that you, when you went out for your runs, you kind of had the exact same approach as what Wyatt is now saying. And now that he is also figuring out how to balance all of these really demanding aspects of his life with his career and that he's doing the same thing. It does truly go to show that you have taught so much as a role model in this regard. So that's absolutely amazing. I love that. At the end of the day, we're all busy and we could always figure out how to prioritize our time to do a bazillion other things. So I'm, I love to hear that you guys prioritize your running and your training. Let's talk about some of our fun favorites. What kind of favorite running gear do both of you feel like you can't live without? Uh, I can't live without my headphones. Okay. Absolutely. I have to ask, what are you listening to on those headphones? Are you listening to music, podcasts, audiobooks? Definitely music. And Mandy, what kind of running gear are you never leaving the house my shoes. I never thought I'd ever be the one to say that, right? Like I am one that is just dead set on a specific brand of shoe for reasons, right? So ultra zero drop shoe I have to have, especially since my knee surgery, my IT band fires like there's no tomorrow and it doesn't matter what exercise, what stretching, how many times I roll out. That zero drop shoe is really important. So my ultra V Olympuses are my favorites. That's I'm not running unless those are ready to go. I have my headphones, but I am such a fickle person with my headphones. Sometimes listening to music becomes just anxiety inducing. So it's podcasts. And then sometimes I look like somebody who's a little disturbed out on the trail because then I'm arguing with what I'm hearing from the different podcasts or I'm agreeing with, you know, like, yeah, yeah, that's right. People are walking by going, is she talking to herself? No, it's great. That's how you know you're staying in conversational pace. That's a great training tactic. So I dig it. I'm curious how well you guys know each other in that regard. Mandy, do you have any idea of maybe some of the genre or specific songs that Wyatt has on his playlist that he can't live without? I do. Not necessarily the songs. I have heard him tell his friends he refers to his playlist as Divorce Dad Rock. <laughs> Please explain to me what that is. Why I have to know what divorce dad rock sounds like. It's a lot of Nickelback and just 
absurdly loud music that's yelling in my ear all the time. Okay. I feel like there might be a playlist that might be generated after this podcast because of this. I've never heard of that. And I, that makes me giggle. Wyatt, do you have any idea of maybe what music genre that your mom can't live without, or maybe one or two of her favorite audiobooks or podcasts that she's listening to? I know for her music, she actually listens to a lot of the Disney theme songs while she runs. It's funny the time she does listen to those, but okay. I'm not too sure about her podcast though. Okay. Hey, I think you've got 75% of what the answer correct. I'm down with it. I am totally down with that. That's perfect. So with that, Let's talk bucket list because you guys have some pretty, sounds like there's some pretty big audacious goals. Mandy, once upon a time, you said that you were one and done in the Dopey Challenge. Is that, has that proven to be correct? I lied. <laughs> You're not the first to lie. So Dopey is going to happen again. Is there another bucket list item that you kind of are thinking of tackling? So the 100K is really interesting to me. That distance, you know, that 62 some odd miles is really intriguing to me. So I think that that's on the goal for maybe late next year. But I always swore, even going into Dopey this past January, that I was not a marathoner. Running a marathon distance, I wanted that to be a one and done. It was on my running bucket list, right? I'm going to run a marathon and then I'm going to move on with my life. And now I'm watching these marathons pop up in such amazing locations. Savannah in November, right? I love Savannah, the historic cities. So why not do a marathon in Savannah? So now I'm kind of toying with how many other locations can I work in? Historical locations can I work in marathons at? (laughs) Interesting. Okay. And Wyatt, we heard that you're planning on tackling the ultra distance world. Do you have some other bucket list experiences that you're thinking of? Maybe not even related to running? Not really. Just kind of pushing myself and seeing what I can and can't do. That's, That's really about it. I think that's especially exciting. I have to ask a little bit about brunch. If you guys could respectively have or invite a celebrity or maybe a Marvel character to brunch, who would you respectively ask? So you're going to have a foursome. Mandy, you get to choose who you want to bring to this special brunch. So staying in that Disney theme, if you know me well, you'd know I'd want to invite Walt. Ah, oh, that would be phenomenal. His imagination, his determination, his refusal to stop, even though he was told no a thousand times, is just amazing to me. So hands down, it would be Walt. Okay, I'm inviting myself to this as well. Okay, how about you, Wyatt? Who are you inviting? Captain Jack Sparrow. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, this is going to be, you guys could probably charge a thousand dollars per plate if you wanted to, to make money off of this brunch, because it sounds like the best party ever. What are you guys ordering? Do you want for the table or what do you want to order for yourself? A massive burger. I love it. Now, would you get like a breakfast burger? Are you getting an egg and bacon on it or just a burger? I might go with a breakfast burger. Okay, got it. How about you, Mandy? Especially post run, like when we do the longer distances together, that is it. I can tell you right now. We are already planning on after the 10 miler at Springtime Challenge hitting Deluxe Burger in Disney Springs, right? It's that just big, juicy cheeseburger, some good protein, just hits the spot. So it is exactly what I crave. That's my go to meal after every marathon for the record. So we'll have to look at that for Savannah as well. All right, my friends, I love this conversation. I think it's been incredibly inspiring. Before we officially go get our brunches on, I would love you guys to maybe say something shared with the audience, a piece of advice, or maybe an observation that others can put into play that you learned from each other. So Mandy, I'm going to go first with you as to something you've learned about running from Wyatt or that you've observed that you kind of would like to share with him and the audience. I think with him, it's his forever optimism. There were a lot of times during this last training cycle for Dopey that I questioned my life choices. You're not really training unless if you're questioning your life choices for the record. Like, I think that's part of how you know that training is going well, but okay. (laughs) Yeah, I remember it most poignantly with the first major long run or what I considered at the time a major long run was a 17 miler. I got to like 16 and a half miles. I could see the trailhead coming. It's only a three quarter of a mile walk back to the house but I called for pickup. I'm like, I am not doing one more step over 17. This is ridiculous. I was really crazy for signing up for this challenge. And I came back and I sat down and I was talking to Wyatt and 
he's like, I don't know what you worry about. You've got this. And I'm like, but, and every time I would start with a, but this felt bad or, but I just want to die at this point in time. He reminded me how far I've come, the challenges that I've overcome to get to where I am and just to do it again the next day. So his optimism and just stop worrying about the negative side of it. Look at how far you've come and and helping me to remember that piece has been really helpful. You realize that now we're all going to want Wyatt on speed dial so he can remind us after every single time that we're questioning our sanity. I love that. It's so special. Wyatt, tell me something that maybe you've learned about running. You did already kind of allude to a couple of things you've learned from mom, but any kind of advice that you'd want to share or observations of running alongside Mandy? Um, Just let things go. Like you got to let frustrations go on like running is a great way to let it go. Just don't let things bother you. If you had a rough day or a rough training run, just move on and improve the next day. And the next day is a great day to have a great day. I feel like we have a little bit of frozen with a whole lot of that optimism and that let it go and let's keep moving forward. So I think that's the perfect little reminder for everyone as we move on. But thank you guys so much for sharing your time with me. And I can't wait to see both of your running journeys continue to unfold. Thanks, Christine. We'll see you soon. Yeah. And we did get to see each other soon and run together. We literally ran the world or the world showcase. So again, Wyatt, Mandy, I had such a fantastic time with you and I love your story. It's going to be dynamic, absolutely incredible to continue watching it unfold. Friends, what's also incredible to watch unfold is this next duo, Meet Kira and Bella. And for friends that are part of the community on our group page, well, you already know Kira. She is an incredible force to be reckoned with, but they are a pair who embody the spirit of determination, joy, and mutual inspiration. Kira was inspired by Bella's running achievements, laced up her sneakers. She chased after her own running dreams and just this past January, tackled her official first running marathon, though I know you did. You walked a marathon. We'll be talking about that. Let me shut up for a second and officially introduce you two. So welcome, Kira and Bella. Hello. Thank you for having us. Hi. Thank you. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm going to start off with Kira. Can you, in your words, introduce your lovely daughter to us? Hi. Yes. My oldest daughter, Isabella. Uh, my oldest child, Isabella, is uh, almost you know 23 and a half, I think. She has uh, always been an amazing athlete and was uh, kind of inspired me to start running probably, gosh, I don't know, 14 years ago now. I can't even remember. You were like eight or nine, I think. And we always did this Nayat school, which was the elementary school in town, this 5K, one mile 5K race that they did for the kids. It was a fundraiser for the school. And she started when she was doing the one mile, I think when she was like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, I don't know, somewhere around there. And she kicked butt to put it mildly. And she was always in the uh, top of the the girls class for her age group. And I was shocked at how she took to it. And then we did a couple of 5Ks or she did a couple of 5Ks. And she was always, you know, as a eight, nine-year-old in the uh, top five of the 18 and under girls cat women's category and as like an eight-year-old, nine-year-old. And I was like, wow. And I had started working out a lot, but I hadn't really taken to running really. So, you know, I started that just being kind of inspired. I couldn't run with her in these races because I never saw her finish. I found that out very early on. She was so much faster than me. So I would just skip the race part and take videos of her (laughs) finishing. And, you know, I did my running on my own time and and definitely, you know, because I wanted to see her, you know, finish and come across the finish line. And she was doing them at uh, incredible paces. And, um, you know, it kind of took off from there. She's a soccer player for many, many, many years. And she piqued the interest of cross country coaches. She did that for a while. And middle school, she was on a state championship team. But I know she always has said she doesn't love it when she does it because she just, you know, so she has the competitive nature. So she goes out and, you know, kicks butt in the races, but she's never really totally loved it. And I kind of was with her for a long time. And it wasn't till a couple of years ago that I started you know, understanding how to enjoy the sport more. And um, 
yeah, happy to have her kind of getting back into it because she's a natural, whether she wants to admit it or not. I can't imagine where she would get this competitive spirit from for the record. <laughs> not at all. Now, Bella, I want to get into a little bit about your maybe love for running and your natural athletic background as well and how you kind of hone that. But I also would love if you would introduce for the listeners um, a little bit about your mom and Kira. Yeah, I mean, I look at my mom as a very extremely outgoing and like vibrant person, Um, very easy to talk to and uh, which allows her to form many connections and relationship as she's joined many groups such as running groups, which is where we how we got here today. And apart from running, she's always really been into sports. Uh, like she mentioned, she got my sister and I into soccer at a very young age. And we continued to play throughout high school. And then she was always super involved, taking us to games. And then when I started cross country and stuff like that, she would always be at the meet. But yeah, and then because of her love of sports, I think I've also gained that same love. And we both enjoy watching and following a range of sports teams and yeah (laughs) so Bella like when I think of like fitness and determination your mom is pretty synonymous with those would you say that you would agree as well yeah 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 I would (laughs) so is the entire household more athletically inclined because she is more focused in fitness and athletics or are you and her kind of the soul I know you said your sister was enrolled in soccer but is it you two that primarily target all of those really fun fitness activities I think my sister is very athletically gifted as well. I mean, she was always better at soccer than I was, but she didn't run as much. And I think since my mom has started running, she's also gotten my dad into it too, a little bit. I mean, he's always been athletic as well, but he goes on runs with her and did the marathon with her and stuff like that. So I would say it's like us four are the more athletically. So the house sounds like it was always full and busy. Kira, I'm hearing soccer and cross country. And I know that there was a family business as well. How did you guys, was it, how did you make it happen? How did you make all of this happen and still be there to take those pictures and videos at the end of the finish line? Yeah, we were very busy. We had, you know, my husband started his own company, gosh, I don't know, 2009 or something. He was in the family business before that. But Yeah, that was about the same time. I think all the club sports started and the school sports started. And yeah, it was a whirlwind, I would say, for a decade or so of just juggling schedules and making sure, you know, and that was the commitment. And at the same time, um, I had been working full time at a local establishment as their sales and marketing director. And they kind of were going through changes where they were trying to work their family into it. it was a family business. So they were letting some other people go and bringing in their own family. So as it were, it worked out for my schedule because I was no longer working for them when they laid me off. So I was able to kind of really 100% focus on the kids and their schedules. And my husband and I have always been athletic and and interested in that type of, uh, you know, kind of active lifestyle. So when my girls, being my two older, started getting into soccer and basketball and track and cross country. It became a whirlwind of trying to juggle schedules. And my husband was starting his own business. So really that kind of schedule with the kids and the sports fell upon me, which I loved. So, and I miss it because they're all older and my, my sons don't really play. So it's definitely a change. So that's freed me up to start more of my kind of selfish running and fitness a little bit more, but Yeah, I think it's been, you know, it was one of those joys that I had. I didn't really get to focus too much on other than my husband and I did P90X way back in the, I don't know, 2009. And and I became like a beach body coach for that. So that was really where my workouts focused for many years. I tried running, didn't, my first season of running, let's just say in my adulthood was not very long and it wasn't very positive. (laughs) Even though my daughter inspired me with her running, I didn't really get, I didn't really figure it out correctly for until my second season of running. And it's a totally, it's a game changer now. But at the time, yeah, it was mostly focused on them and their schedule and, you know, squeezing in my workouts when I could. And my husband was very busy, still is very busy. But uh, yeah, he started running. So yeah, it's kind of been a family endeavor 
to some degree for many, many years. So I would love to hear more about what you would suggest to maybe moms that are in the season of juggling all those things. But I want to also ask Bella, like, how did you feel during all of these athletics? Did you have one that you gravitated more toward? Um, I know that you're naturally inclined as a great runner, super fast, but which ones did kind of spoke most to your love language in your heart? Definitely soccer. I mean, that was the first one I started, I think when I was three. And definitely that love stuck with me throughout high school. I unfortunately didn't play in college. I mean, other than like intramurals and stuff like that. But um, yeah, soccer was the big one. But I was always really good at running. I think the soccer kind of translated to that, helped with that. But so I stuck with, well, I did running in like middle school. Um, I was on the cross country team there. And then once I got to high school, I played soccer. So cross or cross country was at the same time or like same season so I couldn't do both so I mean I gravitated towards soccer for sure but then I did track for two three years of high school but yeah what are some things that you wish that maybe moms of other young athletes specifically young women athletes would know as to how to like best support them through all of those different seasons of tackling academics with school and social and friends and still doing a lot of team sports or individual sports? Are there things that you felt that maybe Kira did that you were like, man, if every mom would do this, they would just be golden? Yeah, I mean, I would consider myself a very independent person, but I think my mom did a great job at like keeping me on track, not pushing me towards one thing or the other, not like prioritizing soccer or other sports or not prioritizing academics. She kept it very, made it everything very balanced. And so that way I was able to like figure out on my own how much time I'd allocate those different like realms of activities, like academics and social life and sports. I'm hearing that basically we all need Kira to kind of teach us how to like balance all the things. So <laughs> So that we could all kind of learn how to time management, which brings me to the yeah. question that I was going back to. So Kira, I do know that you're kind of the queen of time management. What are some words of advice that you would give to moms that are kind of in the middle of juggling all of the things for their children or their girls and also still trying to, I know you mentioned you're in a different season and this season looks very different, but when maybe you could talk a little bit about how you time management in the season of when your girls were younger versus now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say for me anyway, and everybody's different has it, they're coming from a different place, but I'm a very organized person. So for me, it was, you know, the calendar and having that very much always managing that, putting the stuff in there, checking off what we could do, what we couldn't do. If we had multiple things on one day, I would like do a printout for the family and just really, you know, I used to get... I don't know, I wouldn't say sad, but I would get a little bummed when I talked to other moms or dads, even when we were running around in that season of our life of busyness. And they were like, I got to go. I got to go drive here for this game at 8 a.m. on, you know, a Saturday. And, and it was just very much like all about the burden of it. And for me, it was like it was the blessing of it. Like I was very much like all in on enjoying it. Because as I'm a perfect example, it comes to an end. Everybody, you know, your kids, and unless they're, you know, going to go play professional or they're, <laughs> which very few do. And even then, even if they do, it's you're, they're adults. So you're not going to be, you know, carting them around everywhere after a certain point anyway. So it all ends. But I enjoyed it. And I really immersed myself in, in being team manager and really, uh, getting involved with the other parents on the team. And frankly, half of them, I would say, gosh, 90% of my friends, like my closest friends come from those years of sports and activities in my girlfriends, other than my new running community. Most of them in my day-to-day -day life come from, you know, basketball, soccer, running, like doesn't matter that time in my life because I was just so fully immersed. So now time to pivot get a little older your kids get older kids go to college kids you know go to grad school whatever it is and, or they stop playing and that's fine it's next up what's up for me <laughs> so that you know when i kind of found the next season but i would just suggest 
throwing yourself in, don't see it as a burden and really try to enjoy it because it's it's really just a special time. Shifting the mindset of how short and quick it'll be, it sounds like absolutely a game, ch- literally a game changer if you have to attend the games, making it something that you enjoy and kind of creating your community, which brings me to the next conversation. So Bella, how do you feel that having this background in sports maybe influenced you a little bit differently with tackling the lifey things as we get older, going to college, tackling academics or day-to-day situations. Do you feel like the principles that you learn through these sports kind of helped to shape and form more of how you handle some obstacles and challenges day-to-day? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of it, especially in running, I think has given me like a sense of discipline and dedication. I mean, like training for races is hard and when I was younger I was always trying to improve and I was very competitive like my mom said and I wanted to win so that does require a lot of commitment and self-discipline so yeah I feel like I've definitely applied some of those principles to things like academics and future careers you know setting goals making plans and then actually following through with them so oh I love it much. I will say she was the kid when they canceled practice who was mad when she was younger. So that gives you an idea. (laughs) Again, knowing you, I'm not at all surprised. So this is like for anyone who doesn't know anytime that Kira does embark on any kind of a fitness challenge, she is all in. So to see or to hear that Bella's has a very similar way of approaching life in general is no surprise whatsoever. Okay, I want to kind of turn the page a little bit. We're still going to talk about running, but I want to get into maybe how you, Kira, decided. Now, I know that you walked a marathon for a fundraiser, I believe is the case. Is that correct? Yeah, I did twice, actually. The Boston Marathon Jimmy Fund Walk. I think that was like 2012, 2013, somewhere in there, which is the entire Boston Marathon course, which I know you know very well, too. I walked it two years in a row, once with the wrong sneakers. So that was a memory I'd like to forget. But it was great. It was for a fundraiser. It was the first time I've covered that distance. We did a little, it was with my girlfriend, Elizabeth, and we we did a little more jogging than most people because of the fact that your back gets really tired walking (laughs) in just, which, I mean, not to change the subject, but that goes back to the whole Galloway thing where you're changing your body mechanics from running to walking, from running to walking. It lightens the load. So yeah, we did a lot of walking, I would say, when we could. They didn't have the roads closed off, so it was a tight fit on the sidewalks. But it was a great experience, but my feet were very unhappy with me. But it definitely was one of those challenges that I'm glad I did. And I did the Tough mutter at the same time, but I still wasn't into running so much like running, quote unquote, running and doing races. I did a few. Yeah, it just that was a season in my life that, yeah, I wasn't totally in love with the idea of running, but I eventually found my way back. But yeah, I did the walk. And so the the marathon last year was kind of my coming, you know, kind of full circle from that whole thing. Well, that brings me to that part of the conversation, which because fast forward from that time frame, I think it's about a decade later, if I've got the numbers right. 2023, you decide that you're going to register and sign up for the Disney World Marathon during Marathon Weekend. What was that decision? What kind of precipitated it? And tell us more about your training journey. I also want to know, Bella, what you thought when you heard that your mom had done this. So so I'll let you go first, Kira, with kind of what precipitated it. Well, the short answer to that is David Goggins. Okay. The longer explanation to that is, you know, I had kind of found my way back got into running again, fell in love with it, fell in love with the discipline of it, all of that. Started to do some longer distances. I enjoy the longer distances just from the fact that I'm not fast. I hate 5K distance. I do not like running at a sprint at all. But once I started getting into the the half marathon distance, I really enjoyed it. But I was like, ah, this is good. And I'm not saying I won't always think that because that's pretty much my sweet spot forever, I think. But uh, I was listening to his book on books on tape or his audiobook, And there was a quote that he said, well, he was actually talking about someone who came up and said to him, hey, David Goggins, how, you know, can you help me learn how to just do a half marathon? It was a 
gentleman who had never run it like a day in his life. And he said, and he's like, yeah, he goes, but why are you stopping at a half marathon? And I was on a run listening to this. And I literally set out so like, gosh, darn it. You're going to make me run a marathon. And I think I went home that day and posted on socials that I was going to run a marathon, was lucky enough with your help and guidance to get into that marathon. And that same day, my husband said, ah, heck, sign me up too. So we both kind of went full on in at that moment. <laughs> so that's how that came to be. Wow. Okay. I, I want to dive more into that. But Bella, so what are you thinking when you hear, when did you learn that your parents I both decided to tackle the Disney World Marathon. Well, I mean, yeah, I think I I saw her post about it and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I was very proud, like I'm very proud of her when she finished. Um, obviously, it takes a lot both mentally and physically to get there. And I know how difficult it is to train, especially and go for runs on days, especially when the weather's not great and stuff like that. So I know it takes a lot of work to get there. So it just show, it goes to show how strong of a person you, she was and she is, both her and my dad. But yeah, it made me think like, oh, well, maybe I should do that someday. Because <laughs> at the time I wasn't running often. And so I was like, maybe I'll get back into it. And it wasn't until I moved back home till I really was in like being in her like presence again and having her run every day and training and stuff where I was like, okay, yeah, I probably should get back into running. And so, yeah. Very proud of her and my dad. I have a couple of questions, Bila. I mean, because there's just so much interesting stuff here. Okay, so I have to ask, did you ever, knowing your mother, have any doubt that she was going to make it happen from like the day she signed up to the finish line? No, there was no doubt that she wouldn't finish. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew she would. I mean, she introduced me to like the run walk situation. like The Galloway intervals, the run walk? Yeah, yeah. She introduced me to that and I knew at first I was like, oh, well, that seems easy. <laughs> but then I ended up doing a half, well, she's like, I'm running a one walk half marathon. Do you want to do this? Just on a whim. I, rem I don't remember when this was, but I said, yeah, sure. And I had been not running and I was out of shape and I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Um, and at first I was like, this is so easy. Like <laughs> we're running for a minute and then stopping for 30 seconds and then to walk and then run and then walk. But then I think like mile eight or nine came along and I was like, yeah, I'm done. My legs hurt. <laughs> like, so I knew that with her support system and stuff like that, I had no doubt in my mind that she wouldn't finish. So you're considering it. You're just, I'm not saying you, you're signing up quite yet, but you are considering at some point tackling the marathon distance yourself. Yes, potentially. We have, I already told my mom that I would do a half marathon with her in Vegas next February. That's right. The rock and roll. I assume the nighttime run the strip at night. Yeah. So Vegas. Okay. I have that locked in, which is kind of why I started running again to kind of get my way there. Cause I mean, it's less than a year away, but it's still a couple months, but still. Yeah. Takes a lot. So Kira, do you feel like the marathon this past January was your one and done of the marathon distance? Or do you hear Bella potentially teetering on it and you'd want to tackle it again with her? All right. So I would say about the only way I would do another one is if it was with her or one of my other kids. Like, honestly, I loved it. I loved it. It wasn't like it was this horrible experience. I think, you know, talking about the whole process of training and i and i think you are the one who said it was you either pay in the training or you pay on the day of the race and i really paid in the training like just doing it by myself for my husband was actually injured for a lot of it so i was out there it's not not an unusual story a lot of people do this you know they're out there every weekend doing their 15 16 18 20 21 mile runs a long runs alone in the cold, in the rain, whatever it is, making it happen so I could enjoy the day. And I did enjoy the day. And I it, honestly, the actual marathon itself was fabulous. The idea of going through that training cycle again is very daunting. And it's probably too soon to ask me that. But um, I definitely know myself. And I know if, if I had the right motivation, be it 
running with my daughter or running with, you know, at like, you know, an amazing location and I got in or something, I would definitely, definitely consider it again. Um, I am sticking with my halves. I am psyched that she is committed to doing the rock and roll with me and my husband and her boyfriend. We're all going to do it next February. So it'll be a, it'll be a group fun time. And, and she's got a 10 K in like two weeks. So she has been training for that as well. She's, she's working her ba- way back into it. So I'm very happy about that. So she inspired me to run in the first place. I'm glad I can help inspire her, you know, get back into it as well. So it's kind of like a cyclical thing again. Vegas half is a whole lot of fun for folks that are considering maybe you want to, I don't know if it's even still open because I know it goes rather quickly, but if you guys want to join in on this party, I can tell you that Kira is 100% a party. As Bella mentioned, she's very extroverted, very friendly. And let's talk a little bit about that because you didn't just train, girl, you didn't just pay your rent. You like saved, like basically the phrase is like, you're going to have to pay your rent. The bills will come due. Either you pay it during the training or you pay it on race day. You paid your rent like six months in advance. You saved money. You were ready because you didn't just train for your marathon. You trained to have fun while you were at Disney World. So you tackled um, a very special around the world post marathon. Um, So I'm curious, Bella, what did you think about that aspect of her training? And are you guys going to train for that for Vegas as well? (laughs) Well, I think it's awesome that she was able to do both. Definitely my mindset as well would be to pay it in advance because I would want to do that too. Like while I'm there, might as well, you know. So yeah, I mean, Vegas, I definitely want to be able to also experience Vegas and not just the run. So definitely plan on paying it in, in advance. <laughs> That's what it's all about, right? Like it's really enjoying, like enjoying as much as we can. It's still going to, I mean, realistically friends, like who maybe haven't tackled these distances, it doesn't necessarily mean that the distance feels a hundred percent easy, the entire distance, because it is still quite a bit of miles, but if you can do what Kira did and Kira did put in her time. And I know that you had quite the type of, I mean, your weather systems, I feel like during your training season were definitely less than stellar and you still put in the time to make it happen, which brings me to the next thing. So Kira, you know, I live in Florida, so I feel like I am in awe of all of you Northern runners. What is the running gear that you can't live without? Oh, gosh. Well, for the North, I mean, I have this one bailiff jacket, which if anybody who you know sees my selfies knows it's this bright yellow thing that i wear all winter long it's not super heavy it's just enough to keep you insulated wind break dry and i wear it pretty much as soon as the weather gets below well in in this fall it's different because you your mindset's in a weird place as soon as it starts dropping below 50, you start making those decisions. But I think I don't in the fall wear it until 40 degrees, but coming off the winter, I don't take it off until it's 50 degrees. So it's that weird kind of mindset of transitioning in and out of the seasons. But yeah, I would say that if anything, if I don't have that, I'm in trouble in the winter anyway. Obviously, summer's a different story, but you know, I love my my pocketed tights, I keep my um, my phone and my my drink in there when I'm running short enough distance. I wear a, a, a hydration vest when I go longer, but, and the scooch, the, the, what do you call those things? The little scoosh on my wrist. Oh, the squish, yeah, to kind of, yeah, to help with any kind of. Well, and sweat in the summer, snots in the winter, as I say. Or both, really. I mean, both. Yeah, yeah. both. <laughs> but those are, those are key. I'm, I've become like an, an addict for my scoosh. But yeah, that bay leaf jacket, I'll tell you, is, is the most versatile like running jacket or running gear that I have, I would say. Everything else is, is negotiable, I would say. Yeah, I'm not saying that they should sponsor you, but I'm saying they should sponsor you because I feel like you definitely have called them out before as being such a great resource for you to have. Bella, I'm curious, I know that you're getting back into your training, but what are maybe some of the ways that you love to get in a good longer run or a harder effort? Do you like kick on some jams? Or do you like to go without anything while you're listening? I mean, do you do you have a playlist? 
I definitely have to have music. That's like number one. And I mean, this like I need to have music where it's just like the beat is just like kind of like run like I can run to the beat almost. So a high like a higher BPM kind of a thing. Yeah. So definitely music. So no love songs. <laughs> Like, oh, there's one song. Oh, I don't know. It's uh, Run This Town by Jay-Z and Rihanna, I think. The, I like that one, especially in the beginning, because it's it, to start the run, because it, like, builds up, the, like, the beat almost, and it just, like, I feel like I can just go with that, and then I just go from there. <laughs> but that would be, like, a go-to song, I think, at the beginning of the run. Kira, could you put together a playlist for Bella? Do you think that you would be able to pick the right songs for her? Oh, she would hate my music. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, no, I mean, we would. (laughs) I would say my music is very, very, very varied, varied. So she would have some that she would like. I mean, you know, but some of it she'd be like, what's this? You know, why am I listening to, you know, this country song in the middle of my run? Or I do listen to, I would say my go to is Pitbull if I really need a good I was going to his concert one night after an 11 mile run that I had to do that day. So I just ran to Pitbull almost for the entire time. And I can tell you, it was a good pump up. I probably went too fast for a long run, but I was dancing the whole way. I will say that. And I'm sure the neighbors in the town, they're used to seeing me. I get honked at all over town. You know, I don't know who they are, but they're honking at me. I'm just waving. As I'm dancing. (laughs) Yeah, to random people. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You're putting a smile on their face. So that leads me to the next thing in terms of you guys aren't going to be sharing a playlist likely anytime soon, but you are always down for sharing maybe some really good mother-daughter brunches together after your long runs. So I almost think I know the answer for Kira. So I'm going to let Bella answer. Who do you think your mom would want to invite? Maybe a celebrity to a brunch who would she want to invite to brunch i don't know <laughs> well who who would you want to invite to le- to brunch bella gosh this is a tough question that is a tough question right like this this is the reason why i asked this question is only because i'm trying to figure out who i want to invite to my brunches and usually i feel like you guys always have better answers than i do so kira we're gonna let bella kind of think on that i'm gonna ask you who are you inviting to your brunch and i want to know what are you ordering or what are you having for brunch well i mean i think there's a couple of different like paths you could go down like if like my personal life type of thing where someone who i would want to be able to sit down and chat with obviously you can go to like the the real sappy stuff and be like i would love to have my dad back with me. He passed in 2011 and have a, a, a brunch with him. That would be fantastic. But, or a good friend. I'd love to sit down and have brunch with you, Christine. We're going to make that happen at some point. We are going to make that happen. But like, if you get into like the world of celebrity, I think it's pretty obvious. I think I would like to have brunch with uh, Goggins because I do not want to run with him. Yeah. <laughs> You could totally run with him, Kira. No. Literally, he talks all the time about how his pacing is very, very, very conversational because he does go such a far distance. Yes, but have you not seen what his conversational pace is? It's my like 5K pace. Well, I didn't say you have to go on a long run with him, but you could still do a run with him. I know you can. There would be no conversation going at a seven minute mile on my end. That's his easy pace. But I would love to. I'd love to have some French toast with him. How about that? (laughs) Not that he'd eat it, but I would definitely eat some. He's going to be in town. And the minute that I saw that, I thought of you. I was like, I wonder if Kira would want to fly down to see Goggins. Okay, Bella, who are you thinking you'd want to have brunch with? And you're welcome to go a myriad of routes. I'm not going to take them off if you want to maybe have a snappier route or a celeb. I'm down with it. So this is totally random. And I don't know why he's popping into my head but I think I'd want to have brunch with Gronk oh I could see that I could totally see that just based off again of your mom and how sports focused you guys are I could see that that would be a good brunch that would be fun I don't know why he's coming into my head and he's like I think that would be really fun yeah (laughs) for sure now what would you order mimosas with Gronk I love that Well, definitely mimosas with Gronk. (laughs) Do we think he's a mimosa person or do we feel like he's more like a Bloody Mary person? Or is he abstaining completely? Probably beer. Probably beer. Probably beer. 
Maybe a shandy. I don't know. Can we have that at brunch? I don't know. I just saw him in the last time the Patriots won the Super Bowl, the parade. When he went by, I have like a video of him. And I was like, that energy? I don't know. I don't know why that made me think of that. But yeah, I mean, seriously, again, super positive and uplifting. So I can totally see that happening. That'd be a whole lot of fun. Okay, to leave this off as our official finish line, I'm going to ask if you guys could participate in any running event in the world, where would it be? And I guess why? It sounds like it's going to be Vegas for now, because I mean, like that's actually happening. But that was definitely a bucket list. I think I have a few maybe. I, I mean, well, I, you know, the borough racing is definitely on my radar. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to do the borough racing in Colorado. That is on the short bucket list for the next couple of years. I think it would be awesome. Like, I, I think I mentioned the other day was uh, like an Athens half marathon like go back to the beginning or something just to be in Europe and Greece I would love to go to Greece no run no run I would love to do that so I think that would be probably the two that I can think of first would be the borough race that's going to be on my short list and then you know the dream one is down the road okay I'm personally going to try to tackle the borough racing in 2026 because I have to save my pennies for 2025 for my other running adventures I'll wait. I'll do it with you. I, I'm I'm good. It's going to happen. So. so the question is, Bella, would you want to join us with a borough race or do you have a different bucket list that you would like to have happen? <laughs> well, I don't know many races about the top of my head. My mom would know better than I, but the borough race sounds pretty fun. <laughs> We're done. 2026, friends, if you guys are listening in and you want to join us to run with a donkey, you know where to find us. So. It's only a 10K too. So that's the good start one. I think perfect for us where we're at, because I, again, think hearkening back to the episode with Michelle and Burrow Racing, they can definitely get to some intense distances, but I, I will need a smaller distance to kick it off. It's in Colorado, right? Yeah. Well, there's a few different ones out there. Oh, okay. Colorado is like the main one um, where I guess it's the main state that seems to have a most amount of Burrow Racing. I love Colorado, so that would I would definitely maybe be interested in that. <laughs> See, friends, that's what it takes. It's just lacing on up to get out there and then you're inspiring everyone around you. So with that said, I want to thank you both for being such a literally incredible inspiration. There's so many days that Kira, while you take your inspiration from David Goggins and from Bella, you inspire so many of us in the running community, myself included, because you truly are a total badass. So thank you guys for joining me with this episode. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Just a reminder, my friend, I think that every single mom is a total badass, but I can tell you I absolutely loved sharing this opportunity and the microphone and these stories with each of you. Thank you again to Kira and Bella, Mandy and Wyatt, and Caitlin and Emily. You guys made this Mother's Day episode very special for me. I want to extend a continued heartful thank you to each and every single one of you who tuned in today. To all the mothers out there, whether you're pounding the pavement or simply navigating through life's twists and turns, know that you're appreciated and loved. To those who may find today a bit challenging, know that our community is here for you. So we can't wait to celebrate with you over on the community page where we'll be sharing more stories, inspiration, and support. So until next time, my friends, keep running, keep brunching, and keep spreading the love wherever you go. Stay sparkly and have a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you for joining Time for Brunch. If today's conversation sparked your interest, be sure to join our supportive online community. Don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletters to keep the inspiration flowing. It's packed with insights, stories, and tips to fuel your journey of growth. Follow us, subscribe, and stay connected. Until next time, keep smiling and let your journey shine.